Hi, welcome to my workshop. Uh, if you were with us last episode, uh, we were trying to repair a 70-year-old Varney 040 dock cider engine. Now, I have had it for probably 30 years in a box, and, and it wasn't running. And by the end of the last episode, we got it running again. But after it was all together, uh, we put it on a test track, and it ran forwards quite well, backwards not quite so well. So what we're going to do today is give it a thorough cleaning. It probably hasn't been cleaned well, I know it hasn't been cleaned in at least 30 years, and possibly not in my lifetime. Um, so, so we're going to give it a thorough cleaning, see if that helps uh, with it run, helps it to run backwards and forwards just a little bit better. Uh, but before we get into all of that, don't forget to click on the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you won't miss a single episode of John's Railroad Adventures. Okay, so I'm all set up on my workbench, and here's what I have, right? What, what I have is I have, of course, the Varney uh, uh, dock cider, but also have um, an old cookie sheet that I got at a yard sale uh, and a magnet. And the cookie sheet uh, helps me, uh, it prevents sometimes uh, parts from flying away, and the magnet is a good place for me to put screws and and things like that so they don't wander off as we disassemble uh, the, the anything on the on on my bench I have q-tips uh, they're not my favorite thing to use I really prefer to use the the swabs that are designed for audio equipment uh, they don't they <clears throat> the cotton is wound better and doesn't come off in pieces but these will do I also have some some dental picks uh, you can see that they're really tiny brushes. We might need those, and of course, some cotton cotton balls, some isopropyl alcohol, and, and a few clamps. Well, you probably see why I have clamps in a little while. I uh, also have some lubricant, some some uh, lubricating grease with Teflon, and I also have some lubricating oil. And those have different purposes, and they'll they'll find a place when we start to put things back together. Okay, I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing a little better. The first thing to do is just to get everything disassembled. And really, Everything on the, the, the body separates with just one screw. That's that one. It's a, it's a pretty long one. That's brass, so it's not going to stick to my magnet anyway. There we have the body. We'll set that aside. And here's what we have to clean today. Now, I want to be careful with <coughs> the oscillating parts. They come apart and they're a little fiddly, so I'm going to try not to take those apart today. And here's where the clamp is going to come in. This one, I like this clamp, but for what I'm going to do right now, it's just too big. Uh, and so I needed this clamp in order to, to f reassemble this motor while I, I was trying to fix it in the last episode. I don't think it ever appeared, but I'm going to clamp that. Okay, the reason is when I take this screw out, these contacts are both springs and boy do they spring. And if I if we're not holding that with a clamp, when I take that screw out, there will be parts everywhere. So we're going to be careful and put the clamp on there uh, before I take the screw out. Once I take the screw out, that will free up the brushes from the motor. Now, 
don't see they sprung anyway but just the springs did and they were retained uh, by by the little plate so we're gonna pull this <clears throat> we're gonna they're not going anywhere they are both retained I soldered this the, well, the first one is soldered in I soldered that in the last episode and this uh, and the other one is is held in with wire on one end and the spring on the other so they're not going anywhere now now that I have the clamp on there I'm going to take that off very gently I'm going to put my fingers on there instead and then carefully take this plate with the brushes off there we go now the brushes are loose we'll set them right here along with that plate a little bit of electrical tape that was being used as an insulator and then I can finish taking this screw out that holds the motor in and that's not magnetic either so now the motor is free so we have the motor we have all the parts and the gears and the wheels so we'll set set ourselves to cleaning everything up see where that gets us Now I'm just going to pour the isopropyl alcohol in a, in the cap for now, and I'll use that. So we'll see how that works in uh, cleaning the wheels. that's got the wheels now let's set to work on cleaning this gear that's going to take a little bit more effort trying to clean that gear and that's where I'm having an issue with the swab you see that swab when I'm trying to get that gear is just coming apart so I'm doing the best I can. I may have to use something different. And that little brush right now that I showed you before, that little dental brush is really working in between those gear teeth. It's going to take some time, but just some patience go between each of those teeth <clears throat> I'm having trouble turning the wheels now because like I told you uh, this front oscillating piece is a little fiddly and when it comes apart just the wrong way then I can't turn the wheels but I got it it's free now uh, well you can see that but that that gear really looks pretty good. It's it's quite a bit better than where it was when we started. Next we have these tiny brushes. These are the brushes that, that contact the, the sides of the motor. Um, those are, let me point with something, the little black part here, that's graphite. So there's nothing for us to clean there. But the rest of it is brass, and that's going to make a difference in our electrical circuit. So I'm going to clean that as well, both of those. In particular, I want to clean the parts where these springs sit, where the springs make the electrical contact to the brush. So again I'm using uh, that little dental dental brush and I'm brushing 
the groove where the, sp the spring sits. And I don't know how well you can see that on camera, but there's not a lot of difference, but there is a, a difference between the one that I cleaned and the one that I haven't. So now I'll go ahead and clean the other one as well. Okay, I'm, I'm going to call those done. Alright, set those aside again. What I do want to get at is right here is the part where the brushes contact the, uh, uh, on the motor and so I want to get that that part clean. I'm sorry I keep pulling that close to my chest so I can see and then it's out of the camera where you kind of the edge of where the camera sees so that is that is getting better but again I'm going to use uh, my brush See how cruddy that is? We're, that is that's all crud carbon that's coming off the rotor. Which is since it that since a rotor spins with those graphite contacts, that's not surprising. Uh, but it's coated in crud. It looks much better now. It's it's when we started it was basically black, and now it's beginning to look like copper. That's not complete, but by golly, that's miles better than it was when we started. So uh, I'm going to call that good. I could probably get some more stuff off of there if I had the patience. Uh, but I am pretty pleased with the way that looks right now. So I almost <coughs> let that go, and I'm going to work on cleaning uh, that screw gear. That is probably as much cleaning as I can do right now. Now, I'm, because I was using uh, isopropyl alcohol, and and even though that's a significant part of that is alcohol, some of that is water, and because I'm using water near this motor, and that's electric water conducts, so uh, I'm going to leave the motor sit a bit uh, and and dry out before I reassemble everything. Before we finish, before I close it all up, I'm just going to put a drop of grease, just a drop, on top of that gear. I'll turn the motor a bit. Can we spread that? that grease that'll spread some more when we run it and then I'm going to take just a drop of oil just a drop on on each of the rotating parts now for future reference if you looked if you remember the way that looked inside the the worm gear is right there and there's nothing in this whole upper section now the motor is back here you can see it through the cab window a little bit the motor is right there um, but all of this area up here is empty so when and if we decide to convert this to DCC or to put uh, some stay alive's uh, capacitors in there that's where that's all going to go so uh, but for now just remember that's that's all all that space up there in in that the belly of the the boiler of this dock cider is empty so we got some space to work with that's it it's all reassembled uh, so the next thing is to set it on the track Well, look at that. Remember before it wasn't running in reverse nice. 
Now it's running in reverse, just, just nice. And it runs nice. It's not the quietest motor I've ever heard. So there you have it. Um, in our last episode, we got a 70 year old Varney engine uh, locomotive and, and we got it to run. And today we took it apart, cleaned everything up, and now it may not be the quietest engine with the most uh, modern electric motor in it. Uh, really pretty basic on the inside. Uh, but she runs quite well. Uh, we, we saw her run forwards and backwards at really reasonably slow speeds. Uh, so the next step, I think, will be this, this engine, this, this locomotive still has horn hook couplers. Uh, and I'm, I think the next step for us is to replace those couplers with uh, knuckle couplers, uh, maybe from KD make some KD couplers, and then after that, uh, perhaps a coat of paint and some decals. Uh, I, I haven't quite decided. Uh, originally, this would probably have been a, a B&O dock cider. Uh, I, I don't know that anybody but B&O had dock cider 040s, uh, but I have an idea I might do it a little differently. I haven't quite decided yet. So anyway, uh, new new couplers and a coat of paint and maybe some decals are in the future for this little engine. Uh, <clears throat> stay tuned. Be sure you don't want to miss uh, any any of these adventures so click on the subscribe button and the notification bell. You don't want to miss a single episode of John's Railroad Adventures. Have a great week everybody.